What is going on guys? Dranathor here, and today I thought I'd bring you an updated version of the Rika Trap Trick deck that I have been playing. I will go through the deck profile itself, uh, and then I've got a separate deck list, in air quotes, of uh, changes in and changes out, and then go through why I've made those changes. So we have two parallel exceed because you are linking into Sarah more often than not being able to get a free Rafflesia with a Gravedigger's Trap Hole to stop your opponent's Nibiru, to stop your opponent's Ash, your opponent's Effect Veiler, something like that, and making them take 2,000 damage because they printed that on the end of Gravediggers. We have three Mamello, three Pudica, and one Dianea for the Trap Tricks line. The ideal situation is to summon Pudica, search the garden, activate the garden, make Sarah, summon the Mamello, add a Gravediggers to hand with Sarah effect, set Holuta. Um, you use the Dianea during that sequence as a special summon to set the uh, Gravediggers that you discarded. So you're essentially just gaining advantage for free. But that's the, the trap trick side. As you can see, I have cut down. Once again, I will go through and explain why at a, a later date. But three Mabello, three Pudica, just the one Dianea. Onto the Reekers. We're going with one Snowdrop and two Mudan. Still unsure whether I want to run three Mudan, but at the moment it has been going okay. And I don't think I'd ever run more than one Snowdrop, because the amount of times I've ended up with this in hand and not been able to do too much is too often. We have one Primula, because it's a level four that summons itself when you tribute your cards. And three Princess, because Princess is absolutely bonkers and I still can't believe they printed this in a common. And we have just the one Petal, mainly because you want your normal summon to be one of the Trap Tricks. Um, because at very worst case, you can normal summon Mamello, special summon uh, Princess, overlay them into Pinchaluka search for yeah maybe Dianea if you've already got the garden in hand but you don't really want to be normal summoning the petal because you can't special summon Mamello with Snowdrop and you don't want to special summon Pudica because you want to be able to search the garden you can special summon Dianea if you've got a, a trap set uh, in your graveyard but majority of the time you want to be normal summoning one of the trap tricks not the petal, but you still need it for the combo and you still need it for the recursion. I've got a one-off Ash Blossom because it's a cross-out target. A lot of people at the locals play Ash Blossom, and a lot of people at the locals also play Branded, which is why the other two are in the side. But majority of the time, you come up against someone that isn't playing the Branded. It's kind of a, like, they usually win the first one or two rounds so it's later that you come up against them uh, there is no reason why I don't couldn't play three ash maybe take out something to put in three ash but I want one in the main because it's a cross out target we got three glamour because it's glamour one call by the grave because it's like a fourth copy of cross out really uh, the garden you only want to play one garden because it's not something you want to see but it's something that you want to search we got three con con because this is something that you want to see. Um, a lot of people will only play two. I used to only play two, but now I'm playing Tranquility and Sheep a lot more often. I've been flitting between like taking in and out of Tranquility, but I'm, I really, really like this card. So the majority of the time, you want to be searching for one of the traps to set the other Wicon Con, so it's handy to have a Con Con in hand already. Previously mentioned three cross out. Um, to hit Ash. There's a couple people that play Trap Tricks at the locals, so it hits, you know, Podica, Mamello, Dianea. It hits some of the cards that they will be using. Um, no one else plays Rika, so I can't use it to hit, like, Glamour, um, Mudan, or anything like that. Um, I have cross-outed a Call by the Grave before, and I've also cr used cross-out to hit an Imperm, which absolutely clutched and saved the game. Uh, but we play three Imperm, I managed to get a third. And three evenly. It's also a cross out target. But if you go second, you know, your opponent sets up everything, you imperm their problem card evenly, leaves them with one thing, then you just do your full entire combo. The trap line I've kept the same. 
one nightmare, one floodgate, two grave diggers. Never really used floodgate. Um, we have quite a lot of people that play um, like trap heavy decks. Um, we have two people to play labyrinth, so the floodgate can be good to hit the lady, um, but you're more than likely hitting it with the nightmare. So I might cut down the floodgate and put in either another grave diggers, maybe even another nightmare, or just a bottomless. I think bottomless would be a lot better than than floodgate, but something I'm experimenting with. Three holuta because it's you know the card that you know you Sarah you holuta, you're summoning a plan. You're using Sarah effect to summon a trap tricks. The trap tricks effect activates and you use Sarah effect to set a trap. From like just Holuta, you get two monsters and a set. It's great. I previously mentioned tra one tranquility, one sheet. Um, the best combo to do is when your opponent uh, normal summons, uses effect, etc., etc. Special summons another monster. You use Rika sheet, tribute one steal the other because you've got Kong Kong and then if your opponent doesn't do anything else uh, you Tranquility to get rid of their guy to revive two of yours that's why I really like Tranquility really really like Tranquility into the extra deck I'm pretty sure this is still the same um, but we have three Sarah because it's the main link monster that you're using two Jasmine because you know, cash Tira. one Atipus which I very very rarely summon um, but there was a game at last locals where my opponent was playing Dogmatica and they could get rid of stuff in your extra deck um, and he got rid of Atipus because it was a one-off a one-off and he also got rid of Hyperiton because it was another one-off but I was going second uh, so I wasn't really going to use the Hyperiton and it was handy for him to get rid of Atipus because then it gave me the options of everything else that I wanted and we have two Rafflesia uh, one because you're playing Parallel Exceed um, and two, because if you set up quite a few things and end on like a Rafflesia, it stops your opponent if they save the Nibiru for last. Um, most of the time though, you make Rafflesia with Parallel Exceed. It's not very often I've ended on a board with Rafflesia unless I've hit one of the Parallel Exceed. Um, two P and Jaluka. So once again, it's at two, because if your opponent gets rid of one, you've still got the other. Um, P and Jaluka is very helpful if you have Pudica, Princess, uh, Glamour, and say two imperms because uh, you Pudica to search for the garden you special the princess you overlay into Pinjaluka you detach one to add Mamello you Pinjaluka into Sarah garden to then normal summon the Mamello so it's just another way of kind of keeping yourself going and it is also quite helpful against branded as well because if they branded fusion get rid of two uh, you just steal their fallen of allies and put it underneath your Juluka um, two Strena and two teardrop Teardrop's like your kind of boss boss monster. She's the one that you want to want to go for the majority of the time. Uh, Strena's great as well with Parallel Exceed if you don't want to go into uh, your Rafflesia. Um, and say so you can also like Normal Pudica, Princess, Strena if you've got say like Mudan or Snowdrop in your hand. And say two, two teardrop once again, because if one gets hit, you've still got the other. Um, the side deck, I think I've changed a little, um, but I don't ever have this as like, you know, this is my side deck, this is what I use. Um, I've got, say, like 30 cards that are all in the same sleeves that are typical side cards, um, but I did this as my side, so I thought it'd be better to, to keep it in. Um, Pankratops, I think, is really good because it's a big guy and it can get rid of two problems. Erica, I think I'm always going to keep this in the side now. Um, especially, you know, like Labyrinth, their monsters are 2 9 and 3k. And most of the time they'll have like a response or something to stop you from being able to tribute. Um, but if you tribute Erica when you attack with Teardrop, it makes her a 4k. I think I'm always going to keep one, at least one Erica in the side. I don't think it's worth maining because you don't really want to see it. But. I think it's worth siding. Uh, the other two, Ash, the, this could be you know any hand trap. It could be Veilers, um, Ghost Ogres. It, like, I even contemplated running Cherries, because if you come up against a Trap Tricks mirror match and you Cherry Sarah, what does your opponent do? Like, uh, Denko is for Labyrinth. Um, 
it's the deck I seem to have the most problems against. I think mainly because you're both like two very back row heavy decks and you have to be careful on your resources. Like your Grave Diggers doesn't really do too much against Labyrinth. The Floodgate and the Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare do. Um, there was one game against Labyrinth where I went second and I even lead him. Uh, he just scooped because like, you know, what do they do? I got rid of four face downs and his field spell. Like, what does he do after that? He has a singular face down. But yeah, th three Denker. Um, it's a difficult one because you obviously want to do a little bit of your combo. So if you do see the Denko, you probably want to see like a princess as well. Um, so you can say like princess and then move on or snowdrop. Because if you normal summon a trap tricks and then activate garden, it doesn't like count your first one as an additional. Um, you can't. So like normal summon a Denko after, but if you do it the other way around, if you normal the Denko garden, you can then normal summon a trap trick as an extra. Uh, so you just have to go a little bit careful. Uh, but obviously neither player can set spell or traps, so it does backfire on you quite a lot if you're not careful. But if you can set up a Rafflesia, or if you can set up, say, a teardrop and a or a hyperiton, you don't need to worry about setting the cards because Rafflesia can send your uh, trap holes. Um, two cyclone because it's handy. You know, people were playing branded, so you hit the continuous branded spell. A um, couple people were playing runic, so you hit that field spell, and then the people playing labyrinth, you hit that field spell as well. And cyclone can also be pretty good if you've got it set and your opponent only sets one, and you just cyclone their face down. Um, I don't think anybody has been playing Wake in the Dragon. I haven't hit a single Wake in the Dragon in about five months of playing. Which is probably going to come back and bite me one day and I'm going to hit someone's uh, Wake in the Dragon with my Cyclo. 3D Barrier, as previously mentioned, a lot of people play singular type decks. A lot of people play like, you know, Synchro decks, Xyz decks. Fu play it hits Branded as well because of the fusions. I think D Barrier is just the card you put in the side. Um, it used to be Lancia, but now I don't think Lancia is as popular. Um, I think D-Barrier is just the card that you have three of in your side. Um, the only reason I don't main it is because I think there's just nothing I'd want to take out for it. If I was going to main the D-Barrier, I'd probably take out a Concon and the Parallel Exedes. Um, and Parallel Exedes is coming clutched that one too many times for me to think about taking it out. Polynosis is an Omni Negate where you tribute a plan. You know, an Omni Negate where you tribute Strena that goes into a teardrop. And uh, your opponent normal summons. You just go, uh, no. And sometimes their turn just ends. But you would never want to main it. Simply because if you go second and you have it in your hand, it is a completely dead card. But as I've got... Um, I've got Drolls, um, like Vanity's Fiend. It's quite funny, because if you special summon a Princess, tribute it, normal summon a Vanity's Fiend. Like, what does your opponent do? Quite funny. Um, yeah, I've, I've kept like the Cherries as a possible side. Um, it's one of those where I turn up at the event, and a lot of people play the same sort of kind of deck. So, like, the Labyrinth players have been playing Labyrinth for quite a bit. Um, one of the Branded players has been playing Branded since, like, it came out. It's not very often at the locals. We have people who like chop and change their deck a lot. People do change them. Uh, like someone's just picked up the Purely. Uh, and he used to play... Flunderies. Uh, we've got people who have picked up Kashtira when it came out. One of the Kashtira players used to play Branded. The other one used to play Sword Soul. So, you know, people do chop and change. But a lot of the time, people are playing the same deck that they have been playing for a while so I take like a bundle of 25 30 cards and then basically make my side like there and then I feel like that's you know the logical thing to do at locals um, we will go to the changes out and I'll explain why I took them out um, so like I, I think from last time I had dark ruler and droll in the side like I keep these as as cards I just didn't happen to use them last time because there wasn't that many people I was worried about using dark ruler on and there weren't too many people I was worried about using droll on but because I'm playing cross out, obviously the option is to put like one of each hand trap in the side. 
Um, I didn't really feel like Dark Ruler did too much because I was playing three imperm. But I guess the argument is, you know, take out the imperm, put in Dark Ruler. Uh, the f I took out the Arachna Camper. Um, one, because it's an insect and it makes things a little bit difficult. And two, I never summoned it. I, like, I don't think there was one time where I summoned it and it helped. I kind of just summoned it and then kept it there because it stopped the spell and traps from being destroyed. Uh, but whether or not my opponent actually had anything that could destroy the spell or traps, I couldn't tell you because I stopped two of his summons and I sheeted. No, I sheeted one, one summon that he made by tributing the normal summon. And then when he activated a spell, I used the negate on Hyperiton and then he scooped. Uh, but I don't really feel like Arachnacamper did too much, so I took it out. I haven't missed it either. I think there was one time where I had things in my hand and I was like, if this was an Arachnacamper, it would be helpful. Um, and that was because I normal summoned Pudica and he impermed it. So it would have been handy to have the Arachnacamper because I had uh, Holtua and the Trap in hand. Um, so it would have been, you know, Pudica into Sarah, Holtua activate Dianea, set the spell, set the trap that I discarded. Sarah activates to summon one, and then I special summon the Arachnacamper to be able to do the full combo. Um, but I said it was one time. One time. I took out double or nothing. Um, I never used it. So that's why the Utopia and Utopia double have come out as well. Um, the one chance I did have, like, the possibility of using it, I'd won anyway. And if you have the double or nothing in your hand, it is quite sad. It also meant that I could put in, you know, another teardrop, um, another jasmine. I think I had two in already, possibly. Um, it was definitely another teardrop. So that, you know, when you come up against the people playing Cash Tira, you don't just lose your extra deck instantly. Um, so these two came out to put in um, other copies of extra deck cards that I needed. Um, same with Ulse. Didn't really use Ulse too much. Uh, it's kind of a, like, win more card. Um, you put a card like onto the top of your opponent's deck that you know they're not going to use. Uh, it means they draw it for turn, and it's kind of like a soft game. But once again, if your opponent's playing Cash uh, they're probably going to hit it because it's a one-off. Um, the guy playing the Dogmatica stuff, I think at one point he got rid of like eight extra deck monsters, so I would have got rid of it. I'll say anyway, because um, you want to keep you know like a Sarah, a Strena, a Teardrop and probably a Rafflesia. Anything else you're not too worried about. Uh, but it does just mean that if you're only playing to like one teardrop and your opponent knows what the deck does, or as like the other guy, he got rid of it because I had some one-offs. I, I enjoy Ose. I'm sad that I had to take it out, but I had to take it out. And the final thing I took out was the Trap Tantalizing Tunes. Uh, it, I know technically like it's an Ash bait, and that you can discard Princess to draw two, um, but it's a neutral unless you discard Princess, uh, because the Princess gets you the, obviously the extra effect in the graveyard as opposed to in your hand. If you had to discard another Trap Trix, or if you had to discard a Trap, it just felt really, really bad. And the amount of times that I wouldn't have anything to stop it, and I tantalizing tune discard something, and my opponent ashed, and like you know, you're then stuck with three cards in your hand. I just, you know, it didn't, it hindered more than it helped. There were times where, you know, I think I had Pudica in hand um, and top decked the Tantalizing Tune, and then Tantalizing Tune discarded Pudica, drew two, and I drew uh, Concon and Petal. You know, so it, like, it did help at points, but it hindered a lot more. Um, because if you top deck it, like, yeah, if it's the only card in your hand, game over. Um, over to the changes in. Um, I'll kind of go over, like, you know, the crossouts come in clutch, which is why the Ash has gone in as well. Um, I think I've already explained why those are in. I don't think I need to go over why I've, you know, put them in as, as extra. Um, I've also gone over the Primulas, why that's in as extra. But 
I don't know why I wasn't playing this. Because if you glamour tribute your own thing, it just summons itself. And it's also quite helpful if uh, you mood on, tribute something, uh, and you have the Primula in hand. Because it means you can go into like Jasmine, uh, or you can then normal summon a Traptrix and overlay them into like the Interluca or Strena. So the, the Primula is very, very handy. Um, third Con Con is because I want to see this more often than not because I've put in the Tranquility. Um, I'm really surprised like more people don't play this card. I genuinely think this is one of the best cards that Rika has because you're tributing your opponent's monster and summoning two of your own. I, I don't know why more people don't play this. I know like technically yes it's a win more card uh, but even at very very worst case you revive something and throw it in the way so you don't lose if your opponent's attacking you. And, you know, like, if your opponent does Utopia double and goes to run into your Sarah, you can Tranquility to tribute the Sarah to put two monsters in defense and just stop yourself from losing. Like, this card has helped me so much, and I really don't understand why more people don't play it. The the extra deck, uh, I put in a Jasmine, a Pinchy Luke, and a Teardrop, apparently, after taking out uh, an Ulse and the Utopia things, uh, mainly because they're extra copies of cards that I already had just for the cash tier matchup. And then, say the Denkos and the Polynosis went into the side, uh, mainly because, like, I'll probably keep Denkos in the side because Labyrinth is just such a problem. And Polynosis, I think, is just, you know, a great card, and I don't know why I didn't have it sided already. Most of the time, you'll put it in for game three. Um, unless you lose game one, you'll probably want to put it into game two because you know you're going first. And once again, like, if you get to game three, Major like majority of the time you will be choosing whether you're going first or second. There are the odds you know, where you go to game three because you won game two, um, but you would just take the Polynosis out because you would have put it in for game two. It's an Omni Negate. Like, and even if you have to end up tributing something that isn't Strena, like if you're tributing just like, you know, the Sarah that you've already used the effects for, because this doesn't trigger Sarah because it's a counter trap, uh, but you know, you could you know, tribute the Sarah you could tribute a teardrop if you've already used the detach and tribute, and you could tribute, you know, like Reflesia if you've already used the detach and activate a trap. I have. I've played around with it a little bit. I have enjoyed this. Uh, say, so I just really, really struggle against Labyrinth, but I think majority of decks like this will struggle against Labyrinth. Like, even the Labyrinth mirror match is difficult. But that is an updated deck profile. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you have any questions, uh, any, you know, like, how come you haven't thought about using this card? Uh, how come you're using, if I haven't covered it, how come you're using, uh, you know, one of these rather than two? Um, I know the biggest question is probably going to be, like, why are you not playing three Parallel Exceed? Um, I've played Parallel Exceed that many times that when you are playing, say, like, three of them, and you see, like, both two of them in your hand, it's just really, really sad because it just means you ended up with a completely dead card in your hand. Um, while I've been playing two, I have never had both of them in my hand. So, I prefer playing two, but I get why people play three. It's one of those where, like, if you see it, great, because you can make a Reflesia and you have the Grave Diggers for your opponent's hand traps. But majority of the time, you would have got rid of a Princess anyway. And I know the Princess means tributing something, but... If you can stop your opponent's Nibiru by tributing one of your cards, or you can stop your opponent's Ash by tributing something, you know, it's not such a bad thing. So if you do hit the Parallel Exceed, great. But it's not mandatory, it's not required. Um, if you were playing, say, like, Pure Trap Trick, you'd probably play three. Because it's, you know, extra more for you. But I think this deck does enough that if you don't hit the Exceed, you're okay. Um, and it was also a case like the Exeve was in for Utopia because you can't make Utopia with uh, Princess because you have to special summon plants. So the parallel Exeve was in there so you could Utopia double, add the double or nothing, make Utopia. I don't need to hit it, but it's handy to hit it. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, so any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.